Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this session. Uh, the main objective of this session and the following sessions uh, is to discuss the effects of monetary policy on aggregate uh, outcome that is GDP and employment uh, using the ISLM framework. So about the ISLM, uh, the ISLM is called as that uh, investment saving and liquidity money. Uh, this is the expansion of ISLM. So, we are going to discuss, first uh, we will discuss uh, what is ISLM framework all about. Uh, then once you get you are familiar with the ISLM framework, uh, then we will introduce the monetary policy uh, in the ISLM framework and then we will see how in which way using the ISLM it affects the aggregate demand and finally the GDP. The main objective of ISLM is to find the values of the interest rate and income that simultaneously equilibrate commodity market and the money market. Prior to that, uh, as you may be aware that the Keynesian general theory that means uh, as a response to the great depression of 1930s, uh, the birth of Keynesians uh, which also paved the way for the birth of macroeconomics. So, in the Keynesian theory at that time the simple theory, simple Keynesian theory, uh, it mainly talked about that uh, the use of fiscal policy uh, in order to save the economy, uh, in order to as a part of risk management in order to save the economy from recession or uh, economic uh, macroeconomic disequilibrium, uh, Keynesian theory uh, supported for the use of fiscal policy that is increased government expenditure and as a result increased aggregate demand and then increase aggregate demand which would finally lead to a uh, increase in GDP. And in the Keynesian general theory, it is very fundamental, impenetrable and there was many debates around what Keynes really meant using his theory, uh, his uh, general theory. So, in 1937, uh, the Keynesians, especially uh, John Hicks, uh, he summarized, uh, John Hicks summarized what he saw as one of the main Keynesian contribution uh, is the joint description of goods and financial market. Uh, this had led to the development of uh, ISLM framework by John Hicks and Alvin Hansen. Uh, actually, the ISLM framework is mainly a tool to understand the short term macro used for mainly for a short term uh, macroeconomic analysis, then how changes in policy, for example, fiscal and monetary policy uh, would affect different economic variable and finally the aggregate demand and GDP. Uh, in this case, uh, in our session, uh, our focus is that uh, first we identify the combination of income and interest rate uh, that equilibrate money market that is uh, LM. That means LM means uh, the equilibrium in the money market which implies uh, uh, again the, the, the equilibrium in the money market which we have seen in the previous session that uh, if uh, money market in, is in equilibrium uh, that means bond market is also in equilibrium. So, the first uh, we identify the combination of income and the interest rate uh, that equilibrate the money market. Money market means the demand for money is equal to the supply of money. And next uh, subsequently we identify the combination of income and interest rate that equilibrate the goods market. We are going to call it IS model. Uh, these two sets of uh, equilibrium combinations of interest rate and income levels are then shown to contain one combination that equilibrate both, both markets that means ISLM. So, in the ISLM model, the final model, we find out the co equilibrium combination of interest rate and income levels. When uh, IS market is in equilibrium, uh, goods market is in equilibrium, money market is in equilibrium, then finally when both markets are in equilibrium at a, a combination of interest rates and income levels. 
So, before proceeding further in the ISLM, we make a uh, few assumptions. Uh, one assumption is that um, to find a unique point of equilibrium where goods market and money market are equilibrium with a combination of equilibrium interest rate and income level, we have to assume that policy variables such as uh, money supply, government expenditure, tax are fixed at some levels and other autonomous influences on income and interest rates for example state of business expectation that affects investment that also assumed to be fixed so further assumption is that uh, main assumptions here is that to find a unique point of equilibrium uh, we assume that clearly the fiscal policy variable that is government expenditure and tax are fixed at some levels and coming to the monetary policy variable uh, we assume that uh, money supply is also fixed at some levels. So as I mentioned uh, other autonomous way influences on income and interest rate that the state of business expectations and other affect investment also must also be assumed to be fixed. Let us first discuss the money market and the derivation of the uh, LM schedule and LM curve. Uh, the LM curve shows the combination of interest rates and the levels of output such that money demand equals uh, money supply. That means the, there is equilibrium in the money markets. You know that equilibrium in the money market happens uh, when the money demand is equal to uh, money supply. Uh, the LM curve is derived in two steps, uh, one uh, first we explain why money demand depends on interest rates and income. This also called as the theory of real money balances rather than nominal. People demand money not for just for the sake of demanding money but for the purchasing pow power or to, to the, the real money balances. What uh, the money can do with that money what they can do. So that means the real uh, purchasing power that the theory of real money balances. Second one equate the money demand with the money supply and uh, money supply anyway is exogenously determined then the equate money demand with the money supply and find combinations of income and interest rates that maintain equilibrium in the money markets. So here uh, rate of interest and income that the small letter R rate of interest uh, capital letter Y that is the income GDP these are the pairs meeting this criteria are points on a given LM curve. So coming to the first aspect demand for money as we mentioned the demand for money is a demand for real money balances uh, it means uh, people are concerned with how much their money can buy rather than the number of dollars or uh, rupees in their pockets. So the demand for real balances depends on uh, one is the real income that the people uh, hold money to pay for their real purchases which in turn uh, depend on their income that is one. Uh, second one the uh, that means clearly the money demand here that depends on income it also called the demand for money for transaction purpose. And the second variable is uh, the interest rate the cost of holding money the opportunity cost of holding money. So we know that in a market uh, uh, when we put all the assets into uh, money and bond uh, money and bond and we know that uh, for holding money. Uh, money is demanded mainly for transaction for transaction purpose and precautionary motive and by holding money you will not get any interest income. So, but when you alternatively suppose if the assets uh, net worth your assets when you distribute uh, between money that is for transaction purpose and uh, when you keep it for transaction purpose you get zero interest income. But when you keep more money for uh, money you keep more money more of your net worth or assets in the form of money then actually you are foregoing your interest income that means uh, here if you invest in bond uh, you are going to get interest income. So that means the interest rate 
the rate of interest here is the opportunity cost of holding money right so the when the demand for money these two things uh, matters one is a real income then higher your higher the your level of real income that means the more will be the demand for uh, money because you need more money for to meet your transaction and precautionary purposes however the interest rate that is the opportunity cost that means the cost of holding money uh, higher the rate of interest means the money demand will be low so the total money demand uh, we can write is a function of total money demand is a function of uh, income real income and the rate of interest and where you can see that money demand in the keynesian model depends on positively on income because of the transaction demand that means higher the income uh, then higher the transaction demand for money and however it varies inversely with the rate of interest because uh, the point we discuss here when the rate of interest uh, is high suppose the rate of interest is higher than the natural rate of interest suppose let us call it natural rate of interest uh, that means the current rate of interest is uh, greater than the natural rate of interest there is a expectation that in the future rate of interest will come down so the as a result there will be less demand for there is less speculative demand for money uh, because you know that uh, when the rate of interest is going to decline in the future uh, this would lead to capital loss then as a result the people demanding money no the, when the future in the when the future uh, suppose when the rate current rate of interest is greater than the natural rate of interest uh, people anticipate that in the future uh, the expected rate of interest is going to uh, decrease in the future because currently it's above the natural rate then when the rate of interest decline then the you know that uh, the expected price of bond price of bond um, going to increase right the expected prior rate of price on uh, price of bonds is going to increase that means uh, people are going to make capital gains in the future right so the expected capital gains uh, increase the expected capital gains again expected capital gains increase so as a result of their total assets they will be keeping putting more money in the bond market that means the money meant for uh, speculative demand decreases if the when the uh, rate of interest is greater than uh, the natural rate of interest so higher rate of interest means low speculative demand for money and the other one uh, when the rate of interest is high the amount of transaction balance held at any uh, given income level at any income level also declines because high interest rate means as the interest rate de increases the opportunity cost of holding such balances increases then people will reduce their transaction demand for money so to summarize this one the demand for money in a, is inversely related to the rate of interest because uh, speculative demand for money uh, higher the rate of interest lower the speculative demand for money and secondly higher the rate of interest uh, lower will be the transaction demand for money because of the opportunity cost of holding money because money doesn't pay uh, any interest but investing in bond market it gives them uh, interest income so higher the uh, interest income high interest rate uh, they, they will invest more money in the bond market that means they will reduce transaction demand for money let us now construct the lm schedule so we have the, as i mentioned at the beginning uh, money supply is exogenously determined this is a policy variable i uh, exogenously determined is already fixed right and the central central bank the monetary authority uh, they the decision to issue a uh, decision to increase the money supply for them is a policy decision is not depend upon the rate of interest right it depends upon the economic conditions and the objectives of the monetary policy uh, in order to satisfy in order to fulfill their objective uh, they will be changing the money supply accordingly so in our discussion uh, we here we make that money supply is, uh, since money supply is exogenously determined in our analysis we assume that uh, money supply is fixed so the total money demand uh, total money demand uh, is equal to that is a function of uh, real income and uh, rate of interest so we can uh, write it that the money demand is equal to a fixed component um, uh, plus uh, positively related 
to the uh, GDP that the coefficient C of C1 uh, that is positively related uh, to the income and negatively related to the rate of interest. So, let us call it uh, that is the uh, inverse that is minus C2R. So, uh, C1 and C2 that is the coefficient that we are going to estimate later on. Um, so, that is the uh, fraction of uh, that that, uh, that is the coefficient of uh, related to uh, income and uh, rate of interest. So the money demand uh, is equal to C naught plus C one y minus uh, C two r. That is exactly replicating uh, the positive relation with the money demands positive relationship with the income and negative relationship with the inverse relationship with the rate of interest. Uh, since the money supply is already given, so let us see in the equilibrium in order to attain equilibrium money supply should be equal to uh, money supply should be equal to money demand. Money demand is nothing but uh, we already know this C naught plus C1Y uh, minus C2 uh, R. Uh, later on, we will be using this equation while continuing our discussion with the uh, LM schedule. Le for the moment, uh, let us take that uh, this is money supply is equal to money demand, then uh, C naught uh, it is equal to C naught plus C1 y uh, minus C2 R. Uh, in order to attain the money market equilibrium, uh, we are going to show that at the higher levels of income, higher interest rates are required. Uh, then we are going to show that LM schedule slopes upward. So, since uh, our assumption is that money supply is fixed that we are having uh, the, the in this diagram I am going to show I am show, putting here the rate of interest on the y axis uh, the quantity of money uh, on the x axis and here first the about the money supply diagram uh, it is a vertical one uh, this is interest in elastic. Uh, this is uh, exogenously fixed and it is arbitrarily fixed by the uh, monetary authority. Uh, at a given point of time, uh, this is the money supply that is MS uh, note. Then let us begin uh, in the, at a given level of income. Suppose uh, at a given level of income, for example, Y note. So, here this is the given level of income uh, and at a given rate of interest, for example, R note, uh, we can see that. Uh, this is the money demand uh, curve. So, you can see that at the given money demand at a given uh, income level Y naught uh, MD is the money demand curve. So, MD is the money demand curve uh, is a downward sloping uh, demand curve you know that uh, higher the rate of interest um, higher the rate of interest you can see that lower the money demand. Uh, when the rate of interest declines uh, then the money demand will uh, increase that means when the rate of interest decline means um, uh, the transaction demand for money increase because opportunity cost of holding money decrease and again the um, speculative demand for money also increases you know why because uh, when the rate of interest decreases uh, there is an expectation that in the future a uh, rate of interest will increase uh, when the rate of interest uh, rate of interest uh, is going to increase in the future uh, the capital gain the, the from the in, from the investment in bond uh, people are anticipating a capital loss because rate of interest is going to increase then there will be less demand for bond that means uh, increased demand for money that means speculative demand for money also increases. So, then finally, uh, you can see that the equilibrium will be attaining where money demand is equal to money supply that is at a point A. So, this is this demand curve is drawn that the MD demand curve MD at a Y naught is drawn when the income is Y naught where the GDP is Y naught. So, this is the equilibrium point and the rate of interest is determined at R naught and this is the uh, money supply, money supply and money demand. So, money supply and money demand uh, is equilibrium at this point. For example, let us call it money supply is uh, 100 billion. Just at this point, assume that uh, money supply uh, is equal to uh, 100 billion. So, the money demand is also going to be equal to uh, 100 billion. Uh, that is the uh, uh, MD. So, MD. So, at this point, you can see that uh, MS is equal to uh, MD uh, at this point of A. Now, assume that uh, there is an increase uh, increase in income from Y naught to Y1, uh, then further from y, Y1 to Y2. 
So, when there is suppose let us see that there is increase in income from uh, Y0 to Y1, there is an increase in income. Uh, what you can see that uh, when there is an increase in income, what we have discussed here that uh, in, the, in our session that um, increase in income lead to increase um, uh, in the transaction demand for money. Because now they have suppose initially the GDP suppose take the GDP is for example, uh, 800 billion uh, suppose that is initial uh, GDP that is Y naught is uh, 800 billion now become Y1 become uh, for example, 900 billion then you know that uh, here our assumption is that MS is already fixed, MS is fixed uh, then in order to transact this 900 billion of goods and services in real terms, uh, they need more money for transaction purpose. So, as a result, uh, they will be demanding more money, then you know that when they are demanding more money, uh, when the demand for money increases, uh, demand for money increases, uh, demand for money increases means uh, demand for, because their total asset, total assets is uh, demand money and bonds when the demand for money increases uh, that means the demand for bond uh, decreases uh, when the demand for bond decreases means uh, rate of interest the sorry the price of bond decreases uh, price of so we can see that here the when the money demand uh, increases uh, you can see that demand for uh, bond demand decreases so, when the bond demand decreases, the bond price, price of bond uh, also decreases. Uh, when the price of bond decreases means rate of interest increases. So, in this diagram what we can say that uh, when there is increase in income, people demand more money. So, that means money demand increases, then uh, the channel that we mentioned bond demand decrease, price of bond increase and rate of interest increase. So, then that means uh, we can see that uh, the money demand, uh, the, then the money demand curve will be shifting rightwards. So, because of the increase in income at the given rate of interest, uh, they should be demanding this much actually, they, that is their money demand. Uh, but uh, because the increase in money demand and all the point that we discuss here, uh, we can see that uh, the curve will be shifting anyway, the new demand curve is MDY1, this is the new demand curve, but because of the channel that we discuss here, you can see that the rate of interest is increasing and because money supply, since the money supply is anyway is already fixed, is already for example, 100 uh, billion for example. So, the new point of equilibrium is going to be at B, at point B, uh, where you can see that people though they demand more money, uh, because they need more money, the demand for money is more at a higher level of income. Uh, however, uh, because of that, uh, the, the mechanism that we discuss here, uh, the rate of interest increase, uh, rate of interest increase is nothing but the opportunity cost of holding money, opportunity cost of demanding money increases. So, because of that though initially there is a pressure of increase in uh, money demand, finally they will be content with whatever they are having that the initial money supply because high increasing uh, money rate of interest increase the opportunity cost. So, as a result the money demand will be uh, equal to the initial position. Uh, so, that means they will be content with the initial money supply that the 100 billion then the money demand also become 100 uh, billion only because of the high rate of interest. That means, a uh, high rate of interest uh, is required uh, in the money market in order to uh, attain equilibrium high rate of interest is required. That means, successively higher interest rates that is R0 and R1. So, here the rate of interest is required to make uh, money market in equilibrium. Similarly, further if there is increase in income to Y2, again the same mechanism they need suppose uh, Y2 is for example, 1000 billion, uh, you can write like that. So, uh, 1000 billion, uh, then again the, the same mechanism holds here, uh, then you know that um, the rate of interest increase, then finally money demand is equal to uh, money supply at this point, uh, then again the money market is in equilibrium. So, what we can see here is that uh, higher the level of income, to summarize these points, uh, higher the level of income. When GDP increases, money demand increases, however, due to increase in rate of interest, money demand will be equal to the initial uh, position 
uh, because we equate with the money supply uh, so the rate of interest increase so Im Im importantly uh, in order to ensure in order to become uh, the money market in equilibrium increase in income uh, leads to is required uh, successively higher interest rate at the higher levels of income so because of that we can see that uh, higher the uh, level of income when the GDP increases uh, in order to uh, for the uh, money market equilibrium it requires uh, a higher uh, rate of interest so that means the equilibrium points are like that higher the GDP uh, the rate of interest also increases so that means uh, at a higher levels of income for the equilibrium in the uh, money market uh, the equilibrium combination such as uh, this one uh, uh, points along the LM schedule uh, we can see that um, as a result higher income requires successively a uh, higher rate of interest uh, where money market is in equilibrium that the money demand is equal to money supply uh, where the, then accordingly we can see that uh, the LM curve is upward sloping. So the LM curve is upward sloping. So just to summarize this one the reason for the positive slope. Uh, for the LM schedule that means an increase in income increases money demand at a given interest rate because transaction demand for money varies positively with the income and higher economic activity puts pressure on interest rates. So in order to restore, restoring money demand to a level equal to the fixed money supply request the interest rate be higher. The higher interest rate results in a lower speculative demand for money and lower the transaction component corresponding to at any given level of income. The interest rate must rise until this decline in money demand is just equal to the initial income induced increase in uh, transaction demand for money. Uh, let me also show you here uh, this diagram uh, the money supply which we mentioned here uh, this is actually the real balances it should be um, expressed in real terms that the money supply uh, divided by the price level. This is another way because we are talking about the uh, real money supply that means uh, real money supply uh, M, M divided by P. So again in order to do that what we say that we also assume that the price level is also fixed. This is another way of presenting that the MS it also can be written as um, MS uh, that is MS divided by uh, the price level. So here our assumption is that money supply is uh, fixed and again the price level uh, is also fixed. So in the next session uh, we will continue this discussion then we will also see what are the factors that affect the shifting of LN curve and subsequently we will also derive uh, uh, the IS schedule and IS curve. Thank you.